Hello again. I want to introduce you to my wife, Linda. Linda and I have been friends for a long time, and Linda and I have been married for a long time. Hello, it's good to be with you and greet you in the name of the Lord Jesus. Jack and I have been married since 1968. We have two sons, two daughters, and two wonderful grandchildren. Linda is going to give you some information about how you can get in touch with us and also about how you can obtain more information about this or other messages that are available as well as other materials available about our ministry. You can go to our website at www.pureriver.info where you will find a list of other available messages and you can email us at park at pureriver.info with your comments and prayer requests. We would love to hear from you. Welcome back as we continue the subject of the cost of discipleship, what it actually costs to be a disciple of Jesus. In Luke chapter 14, we read this interesting passage that great multitudes followed after Jesus, and He turned and said to them in Luke chapter 14, verse 26 and 27, If anyone comes to Me and does not hate his father and mother, wife and children, brothers and sisters, Yes, and his own life also, he cannot be my disciple. And whoever does not bear his cross and come after me cannot be my disciple. A greatly misunderstood passage of Scripture here in Luke chapter 14 is vital to our understanding about what it means that there is a cost to being a disciple of Jesus. Now the message of Jesus was always a message of divine love. It was a message of the love of God towards mankind, a message of how we can love God back, and a message of how we can share the love of God with one another, which was the greatest commandment in the law, which was the most important thing that God had commanded to man. Jesus answered in Matthew chapter 22 that the most important commandment, the greatest commandment, was to love the Lord your God with all your mind, all your heart, all your soul, and all your strength. And the second is like unto it, to love your neighbor as you love yourself. The message of Jesus as well as the example of Jesus was always a message and an example of love. And in fact, John explains it this way in his first letter to the church. The Apostle John says this, Beloved, let us love one another, for love is of God, and everyone that loves is born of God and knows God, for God is love. So what did Jesus mean then when He told us in Luke chapter 14 that in order to be His disciples, we had to hate our father and mother, our brother and our sister, our wives and our children, and even our own life? Let me say it to you this way. Jesus' use of this term hatred was a comparative term. Jesus wants to be first place in our lives in everything. Our loyalty and our devotion to Him when he compares every other relationship of our lives with it, may be termed hatred by way of comparison. That means even those closest to us, compared to our relationship, our loyalty, our devotion to Jesus, our relationship with them is hatred by way of comparison. The cost of being Jesus' disciple is that he must be first in all of our loyalty, all of our devotion, all of our affections. Now, he also applied this term hatred to our own lives also. Jesus has made it clear to us that we must pick up our cross in order to follow him. And in fact, in Luke chapter 9, Luke adds that Jesus said we must deny ourselves and pick our cross up daily in order to follow him as his disciple. Now, the cross is a symbol of death, just like a guillotine or a hangman's noose or a firing squad. It's an instrument of death. But the cross is more than an instrument of death. It's also a symbol of resurrection. The cross is empty. And so the cross signifies, bearing our cross signifies, putting away our old life, but picking up the new life that Jesus has given in its place. The cost of being Jesus' disciple is the cost of daily self-denial to pick up our cross and follow Jesus. In our first message, we examined from Matthew chapter 10, verse 24 and 25, that Jesus said it is enough for a disciple that he be as his master. But what we didn't look at was the immediately following verse where Jesus said this, They have called me, that means they called Jesus, Beelzebub. That means the chief of the devils. They called Jesus the chief of the devils. 
That, then Jesus said, if they've called the master of the house the devil, what are they going to call his disciples? Let me be honest with you. Let me be realistic with you. It's not always easy to be a disciple of Jesus. Part of the cost of being a disciple of Jesus is that sometimes men will say things bad about you, just as they did about the Master. But in the Sermon on the Mount here, we find Jesus saying this wonderful idea. Matthew chapter 5, verses 11 and 12, Jesus makes this wonderful statement. Blessed are you when they shall revile and persecute you and say all kinds of evil against you falsely for my sake. Rejoice and be exceeding glad, for great is your reward in heaven, for so persecuted they the prophets who were before you. It is a part of human nature to criticize and to slander and to persecute and sometimes even to kill those who are somewhat different. I'm speaking to you from the Middle East today. A friend of mine who lives not far from here recently had an experience where people from another faith were persecuting his children simply because they were Christians. His response to that, to them beating up his children, was to invite all the neighborhood children to bring their bicycles to him for repair, and freely he repaired their bicycles and made friends with all the children in the neighborhood. This is the Christian response to persecution. In another country not far from here, just three months ago, three of the brothers in the church were murdered for their faith in Christ Jesus. And here in our own country, only about two weeks ago, one of the brothers who's beloved by the church here was kidnapped and murdered by radicals from another faith. The entire history of Christianity indicates that there are possibly as many as 70 million people who have been put to death as martyrs for their faith in the Lord Jesus Christ. And the astounding thing is that about 65% of those were martyred during the 20th century. So there were more martyrs made during the 20th century than in all the previous centuries combined. Perhaps 45 million people died for their faith in Jesus during the, 20, the 20th century. To follow Jesus as his disciple will bring persecution. Ostracized sometimes from friends and family, and in some case perhaps even death. But God has given us a wonderful example in his word from the first martyr Stephen of what happens if this were to occur. Acts 7 says, Stephen, being full of the Holy Spirit, gazed into heaven and saw the glory of God and Jesus standing at the right hand of God. And they stoned Stephen as he was calling on God and saying, Lord Jesus, receive my spirit. Do not charge them with this sin. And when he had said this, he fell asleep. The cost of discipleship is to follow Jesus for the rest of your life, trusting in him for the final outcome in this life and the next. God bless you and we'll see you next time.